So this video is going to be about transcription, translation, and the genetic code. So some basic principles to start with. So genes are going to be uh, what is actually providing the instruction for the synthesis of these proteins. So after we have a particular gene, the next step is to transcribe that gene, which is going to take our DNA and then transform it into RNA. And so messenger RNA is going to be um, the transcript that is actually exported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm to then be translated. And so we have this step in the middle, this pre-mRNA, and so we're going to go through a process called RNA processing, which we'll cover more in another video, to get our final mRNA that gets exported and can then be used to make a protein. So the process of making that protein is called translation. And so in translation, we are going to have this ribosome, which is what's responsible for making the protein, uh, that's reading the mRNA and using the information on this strand of mRNA to know what amino acids to put in to build this protein. So some basic differences between DNA and RNA. So DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is typically single-stranded. Um, and we know that all nucleic acids are made up of a phosphate group, the sugar, and then a, nitro a nitrogenous base. And so in DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose, and in RNA, it's just ribose. And so lastly, the bases that we have in DNA are guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. But in RNA, the nucleic, uh, our nitrogenous bases that we have are guanine, uh, cytosine, adenine, and uracil. So we know automatically that if a molecule uh, that we know is a nucleic acid contains a uracil, then it has to be RNA because uracil will never be in DNA just as thymine will never be in RNA. So the genetic code. So when we're looking at the genetic code, everything is really based on units of three. So a unit of three bases is going to be called a uh, codon on our mRNA. And so when we're looking at that codon, then uh, that's what the ribosome is going to read to know what amino acid to then um, incorporate into the growing polypeptide strand. So now this is a strand of DNA. So we have our template strand right here, and then we have our non-template, which is our coding strand. So this bottom strand right here, the coding strand is the one that um, is going to have the same sequence as our mRNA molecule, but with our Ts replaced by uracils. And so this template strand so this is the um, template strain because this is the one that the um, transcription machinery is going to read to produce a complementary strand of mRNA, which since it's complementary, will have the same sequence as this non-template or coding strand, but with the thymines replaced by uracils. So triplet code, so mRNA is read as a sequence of codons, um, which is what we just talked about. So this sequence of three uh, nitrogenous bases would be a single codon. So codons, triplets of nucleotides. So the template strand is going to be one DNA strand that is transcribed. So like I said briefly in the last slide, this is our template strand. So this is the one that gets transcribed. So we read this top strand to figure out how to make this mRNA. And then also we can see that this sequence of mRNA right here is the same as the sequence on the non-template or the coding strand, but we have our thymines replaced by uracils. And so moving on to the codon table. So when we're given a molecule of mRNA, we're always going to read our codons from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And so for example, if we have the codon um, ACU, how we would figure out what that or what amino acid that coded for is we would take our first uh, nitrogenous base, which is A, and we'd go over here. So the next one, C. So we'll go to the column marked C, and then finally U. So ACU is going to encode for the amino acid threonine. So we read it first base, second base, third base, and then you find the point where they all intersect, and that will tell you what amino acid that codon codes for. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one 30-minute appointment or you can drop in 
during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu tutoring.